In this video, we'll go over 11 tips for Photoshop users that will really help out your designs. I think these tips will especially help new users just starting out with Photoshop. And we also provide PSDs from award-winning graphic designers to learn from. These tips are used in these PSDs, so you'll be able to learn the same techniques through this video, or you can look through their PSDs. Check under the video in the description for the links. So number one is custom paint brushes for special effects. They make light beams, sparkles, light rays, shapes, bubbles, and more. They're easy and fun to use, plus they really enhance your anime and game based designs and work well with renders and backgrounds. You do have to install these, but they're usually free, and I'll link you to some under the video. All you have to do is drag the ABR file for the brushes into Photoshop or double-click on them. There's many amazing custom brushes on DeviantArt. For example, here's a cool lightning one. We'll install it and use it with one of our renders. And that was pretty simple as you can see, and you can get really creative with these to make some amazing designs. Now, while custom paintbrushes are amazing, don't overlook the default paintbrushes and their uses. They're very powerful tools in the right hands. First of all, they do make the light orbs which are used in many anime and game designs, and they look even better when combined with colors. I love using these. But using paintbrushes for your design's colors can really enhance the background and foreground images on your designs in unique ways. For example, we can make a background out of paintbrush colors. I strongly recommend you check out the Natsumi PSD linked under the video to learn more about using paintbrush layers for colors over a render. This is really cool. Just make sure you have your paintbrushes on separate layers so you can adjust them individually and use blending options like opacity on them. Number three is the curves layer. A lot of anime and game graphic designs have changed the contrast using a curves layer. It's tricky to set just right, but all you have to do is click on the half moon icon at the bottom of your layer window and then on curves and then adjust the wave. This will mix well with your paintbrush layers. Just remember that it only affects the layers under it in the layer window. Experiment with curves to find the best look for your own graphic designs. For number four, use all of the color options that you can find in Photoshop. Now you've probably seen anime and game designs that follow one color or have low saturation or are monochrome. Well, hopefully you know how these are colored, but if not, I'll show you important color options you need to know and be using right here. First of all, you can adjust color saturation through this option, and this also lets you make monochrome designs. Now 
You can also use the blending option color overlay set to blend mode color to change a layer to one color. This is used in a lot of designs on my anime list. I also recommend looking into gradient map and color fill for more color options. And the PSTs linked under the video also have some good examples. Number 5, Waifu 2X. This isn't a tool in Photoshop, but it's one of the most important tools a lot of people use with Photoshop, so I strongly recommend you share this tip with others. Waifu 2X is an online app that will quickly increase the size of a graphic or render or background and keep the original quality. It can also remove noise from a blurry or pixelated graphic. This gives us access to many more backgrounds and renders to use in many more designs, especially large designs. And you can even fix old and low quality images from the past. And Waifu 2X is especially useful when making wallpapers due to their large size they often need and the increasing size of monitors and things like 4K. So number six, you need to start using the clipping mask. This is used in almost all member card designs and a lot of profile graphics. It's really important to know and use clipping mask in your designs because you'll have a lot of options with it. The clipping mask will add an image to the layer under it. This way you can combine graphics with renders and shapes, and that's how a lot of member cards are made, like here. You can also combine images with a border through the clipping mask. I'd also recommend looking into Pattern Overlay, which is similar and really good for adding texture to your images. There's also custom patterns which you can download and use off of DeviantArt. For number seven, learn to be creative with the eraser tool. The eraser tool is very powerful when you get creative with it and combine it with clipping masks or shapes and blending options. You may have seen graphics like this where just the eyes are colored or otherwise some single part is colored or glowing and the rest isn't. Well, that kind of trick can actually be done with the eraser tool. Just create a duplicate of the graphic and then erase everything but the part you want to change. For example, here a duplicate of the render was made and everything but the eyes was erased. Then the eyes are colored and the original render is not colored. This makes the eyes seem to be colored and the rest of it not colored.
You can do this with any graphic shape or render and use it with any blending options. I also like to use this trick with weapons and jewelry and outer glow to make them glow as you'll see here. Here's a good example once again of separate colored eyes on a discolored render. And also the shapes which the designs are clipped to have been erased down so he can fit them together in this unique way. You'll definitely want to look at this PSD and it's linked under the video. For number 8, start using your pen tool. So earlier, you saw me combine images with a shape through clipping mask and a member card. Well, a lot of award-winning member cards have more complicated borders than what you see with the shape tool. You can make a shape or border with angled corners using your pen tool. Just click the pen on where you want your corners and then build your shape. This is good for angled borders and custom shapes. I strongly recommend you use the guides though found under the view tab. You can also check out Yorium's cards here for inspiration to see how good angled borders can be. He's one of the best graphic designers on my anime list, and this is a good example of how creative you can be with borders and shapes. You can also make angled shapes like this with the pen tool. Here I have two shapes on top of each other with angled borders. For number 9, I want to tell you about some Photoshop keyboard shortcuts that were recommended to us by Hahido who's one of the best graphic and list designers we've ever seen on the site. Mastering these shortcuts will speed up your work in Photoshop and give you more time to be creative. First shortcut is you use the Alt key plus the mouse wheel, and that'll help you to zoom in and out of the design. This is super useful because chances are you're gonna be zooming in and out a lot. You can also duplicate a layer instantly by dragging it while holding the Alt key. And Control key plus left mouse will let you select multiple layers at once. And I want to add that double clicking a layer is going to bring up blending options automatically, which you might be working with a lot. Control key plus T brings up free transform for the current layer, which is a frequent command that I use. And of course, Control Alt Z lets you step backwards and undo your last command. For number 10, you should be grouping your layers together, especially if you have a lot of them in a PSD. As you can see here, I use this PSD a lot for YouTube thumbnails, and I have a lot of layers for different videos. It's best I group them by videos, so this PSD is more organized. Just select all the layers you want to group with the Shift or Control key, and then right-click to group them. Lastly, at number 11, you should know how to combine images and renders together in a collage. Like for example, something like this. A lot of Photoshop users though don't seem to know how to do this yet, and I have been asked about it. We're going to use a combination of shapes and clipping masks and overlays, which we have seen in this video already. This will be useful for cards and profile graphics and maybe even wallpapers too. So I'll end the video with showing you how it's done. And if you have any tips for us, please leave them in the comments below.